This air supply knows how to deliver a constant flow of air even when something restricts the flow of air because it's measuring its own airflow and using closed loop feedback. These brushless DC fans are in computers and a lot of other things and they're easy to obtain. They're called brushless because they use a electronic commutator that requires a Hall effect sensor and uh, one of the interesting things about it is you can read that Hall effect sensor externally even when the fan isn't powered. So with the, with the fan off, we can still measure how fast it's turning and we can use that as a sensor for airflow. So what you're seeing here is two fans inside a box uh, and uh, one fan is powered and it's moving air and the other fan is not powered and it's measuring airflow uh, based on how fast it's spinning. And there's a microcontroller that's controlling that through what's called uh, closed loop feedback with a PID controller. There's lots of reasons to measure airflow, uh, and there's not a lot of reasons to want to have a constant airflow supply. I'm planning on using a constant airflow supply in a gasifier because I have to push air through a pile of sticks and wood chips and dirt and uh, you don't really know how hard you have to push your air through a pile like that but you need the rate of airflow to remain constant. What's inside the magic box? Well two fans. This is the fan that's pretty powerful. It's about a 12 watt fan and it's moving the air and then this is about a 1 watt fan and it is the sensor and uh, I found it was really important to mount this one backwards so it would typically blow air that way but it turns way better when uh, air is kind of being blown backwards through it and uh, that's it. Okay so this is the electronics for the regulated airflow supply. The main thing here is uh, there's an Arduino Uno over here and uh, this is doing all of the thinking. It's uh, connected to my computer so that I can just get serial out and see what's going on. Uh, and it also gets a little power from the computer, it gets five volts. Um, so this, this board is configured, there's a, there's a five volt rail over here, and then there's a 12 volt rail over here coming from a power supply. So uh, <clears throat> the Arduino is living in the five volt world and uh, the fan, which is this uh, wire over here, is a 12 volt fan and uh, bridging the gap and bridging the power divide, there's a big end channel MOSFET in here, way bigger than it needs to be actually. And uh, there's uh, just a capacitor to smooth that, uh, smooth that power out. So the Arduino is uh, reading a couple of things. First of all, there's this this potentiometer is uh, just a set point, so I'm just uh, using this as a knob. And the Arduino is reading the value on the knob. Uh, and uh, I'm using that as the set point. So if I want more air, I turn this up, and I want less air, I turn it down. Uh, that's being read through one of the A to D channels on the Arduino. The other thing that it gets as input is the tachometer signal from the sensor fan. And that's just going into uh, one of the pins that's interrupt enabled because I'm using interrupts to count those uh, uh, cycles of the Hall effect sensor. And then an output is uh, connected to the, the big MOSFET. And this is a PWM output channel. It outputs a square wave with a variable duty cycle. So essentially I have a way to, uh, to control the, the voltage here. Like It's not perfect, but I'm sort of... Uh, regulating the power to the fan through a PWM signal. Okay, the system's up and running now, <clears throat> and uh, as I restrict the fan, it increases power to compensate to try to maintain the same airflow. I can restrict it more, and it, it turns up more, and as I remove the restriction, it powers down the fan to try to maintain that constant airflow.
Okay, well, you can use a, a three-wire fan as an airflow sensor. It's not a perfect airflow sensor by any means. It's quite non-linear. Um, it's also slow to react. I mean, one of the main things is there's quite a bit of rotational inertia in the blade. It doesn't uh, instantly spin up and spin down in the air. So uh, your sensor reading is always kind of lagging airflow. It's, it's always behind what the airflow really is, which is not great. Uh, and there's some other problems with the uh, circuitry in a three-wire fan and just the way it the way it's laid out that's uh, going to limit the usefulness as a sensor. This is the stator portion of that fan. This one's I destroyed taking it out. But this little four-legged component contains the Hall effect sensor, but it's not just the Hall effect sensor. Its main job is to do the commutation for this motor, so it uh, knows how to turn the uh, motors that turn these poles on and off to move the magnet in a circle. So this is the fan portion of the uh, little DC fan I'm using as a sensor. And uh, a few things to notice. First of all, this is uh, really an airfoil. So if you look at the cross section of, of each blade, this is really an optimized airfoil for, for to be efficient at a particular airflow speed. You know, this is really designed to um, be a good computer fan to move a lot of air for not much power and not make a bunch of noise. So this isn't like one of those drag devices you see on an anemometer where it's just uh, cups, you know, that uh, that create drag as, as air moves past them. So this, this is an airfoil that I think uh, once you take it out of the range that it's designed for, it starts to behave, you know, non-linearly. So you move too much air past these steep angle of attack blades and they stall and then... So I'm getting uh, high readings. Uh, I'm getting low RPM readings from the fan even when it's uh, a high airflow because I've sort of exceeded what this fan should be doing. So this approach might work pretty well if you are trying to measure an airflow that is sort of within the realm of what the sensor fan is designed to do. The other thing about this fan is uh, the poles of the magnet. So these, uh, this is a kind of a permanent magnet rotor and I used a compass and I found out that there's like a north and a south and a north and a south. So the poles are pretty far apart, and you saw the tiny little Hall effect sensor. So I think possibly at low RPMs, the magnetic field just isn't changing fast enough for the Hall effect sensor to detect the, the rotation. Having tried the cheapest thing, I'm now going to try the next cheapest thing, which is measuring airflow with one of these differential pressure sensors. This one is uh, sort of plus and minus 10 kilopascals, which uh, would work for me. It's an analog device, and uh, they're on their way from mainland China as we speak. If you want to see that video when it comes out, subscribe or not. Uh, I don't really care. I'm not a professional. This is just something I do for uh, fun. Ciao.